Hello, my name is Sibe Broersma. In this week we will focus on renewable energy production in and on buildings, the third step of the new step strategy. I will explain something more about producing energy with the most suitable and most commonly used source for buildings, the sun. The sun is everywhere and the building skin is exposed to it. And this is where solar energy can be converted into useful energy. The sun can be used to produce electricity or heat. In general, there are three types of devices that are suitable for buildings to actively produce energy. Photovoltaic or PV cells and modules can be applied to make electricity. Solar collectors or solar thermal modules produce heat transferred to a liquid and PV thermal or PVT modules produce electricity and heat at the same time. Yet solar collectors produce higher temperatures than the PVT modules. The application of solar energy products on buildings is often done by simply mounting solar modules or collectors on roofs. But well integrated solutions contribute both to the sustainability as to the attractive appearance of buildings, as we will see. The efficiency of solar cells has doubled last decennium and the production costs have dropped rapidly. Therefore payback times have dropped by a factor of 10 in the last 10 years. And since the solar industry has grown rapidly into a major industry, very affordable PV modules and many different solar projects are on the market, market of which many can be attractively integrated in buildings. And we see two examples, different type types of fully integrated photovoltaic roof tiles and colored PV modules integrated in the facade. Solar systems cannot only be integrated in buildings in roofs on and facades, but also in sunshade systems, in balconies and in windows. There are three main types of PV cells and modules that are used in the building industry to produce solar electricity all have their specific advantages. Multicrystalline, these are typically blue and you can recognize the crystals and the silver electricity conductors on top of the cells. But also other colors are available. They have good performances around 70% for a relative low price. For smooth integration in buildings this typical appearance may be a drawback. Monocrystalline, these are typically back black and the cells have a uniform appearance. The modules have a high efficiency, around 20% and are also slightly more expensive. In full black modules, they can easily be integrated in buildings in an attractive way. And there is thin film. These modules exist of large homogeneous cells that are often black and flexible. They are much cheaper but with their efficiency is also lower, around 12% but with a homogeneous appearance, they may be the best option for optimal integration in buildings. PV systems consist of an array of PV modules. They convert solar radiation into low voltage direct current electricity that is transformed in an inverter into alternating current, as we use it in our homes, often on 110 or 220 volts. We can now use our solar electricity or put the excess production on the electricity grid. And today PV systems have typical efficiency of 12 to 20 percent. But they don't produ produce everywhere the same amount of electricity. The amount of solar radiation differs for each location in the world. Closer to the equator there is more solar radiation and the orientation of the modules also influences the amount of solar radiation. The highest annual production of solar energy can be reached when solar projects are maximally oriented towards the sun. And this is often on pitched roofs facing the equator. So south facing in the northern hemisphere and north facing in the southern hemisphere. Or on tilted solar modules on flat roofs. The further from the equator, the larger the tilt should be for maximized production. In mid-Europe, the optimal orientation is somewhere around 40 degrees facing south. But we can easily deviate from the optimum to still have good yields. 
also if the modules are more east or west facing, as we can see in this last diagram. We can make a quick estimation now, for example, how much one PV module on a 45 degrees pitched southeast facing roof would annually produce in Amsterdam. We see on the solar radiation map that Amsterdam gets 3600 megajoule of solar radiation per horizontal square meter in one year, which equals a thousand kilowatt hour. We assume a system efficiency of 20% and 5% less production for southeast facing compared to south facing. But we have a 100% optimal inclination and orientation compared to 90% horizontally. In total, this 1.6 square module will produce 338 kilowatt hours of electricity in one year. Solar thermal collectors applied on buildings are generally flat plate collectors or evacuated tube collectors. The last one is able to produce higher temperatures, even above 100 degrees Celsius would be possible. Efficiencies very much depend on the desired temperatures. The higher the temperature, the lower the efficiency. Solar collectors for domestic use have efficiencies of around 25 to 35 percent. The heat must be used locally and has to be stored, as we can see on the right, for example, on top of the collector. They are often used to provide domestic hot water, for which there is a demand all year round. But heat from solar collectors can also be used for space heating. In this scheme, the solar heat is used as a source for a heat pump system. In colder days, the heat pump increases the heat to provide heat for the floor heating system and domestic hot water. But since most heat will be produced in summer, when the demand for heating is the lowest, a seasonal storage system could increase the use of solar heat. For example, by storing it in the underground, in a borehole thermal energy system in this case. Finally, we have PV thermal modules and they are winners in efficiency. They produce electricity with around 20% efficiency and low temperature heat with up to 50% efficiency. We finish with some examples of nicely integrated solar systems. At the roof of the Energy Academy in Groningen, the Netherlands, the electricity production on the roof is maximized by directing the modules east and west on a south facing roof. This way there is even space left for windows in the roof for daylight access. And although the yield per module is around 20% less compared to optimally positioned modules, the total yield of the roof is 30% more this way. The positioning of the modules also results in a more evenly distributed energy production during the day and during the year. And therefore, more energy can be used directly without using the national grid as a buffer. In these facades you would hardly expect that the greenish tiles produce electricity and that the blue fences produce hot water. <laughs>